You might think that getting access to fresh, clean veggies and great tasting fish out here in the middle of the desert is next to impossible. But today I'm having a look at two central schools, one in Menindi and one in Wilcannia, that are separated by about 130 kilometres along the Darling River. And I'm having a look at systems that they're putting in place to grow food using aquaponics that increase learning outcomes for their students and increase health outcomes for their towns. These two schools are at very different stages, Menindi well established and Wilcannia just beginning on the journey and we're going to have a look today and see the two very different outcomes that these schools are getting from their fantastic aquaponic systems and we'll find out more about how they work and how they grow. <laughs> Imagine if your school was so awesome that you could bring your learning outside, grow your own food, grow your own fish, set up an aquaponic system, and then when you go back into the science classroom, you were challenged to use all of your learning to build your own. I'm at Menindi Central School with Shani, one of the teachers here who's one of the powerhouses behind this project, to talk about the aquaponics system that is being set up in central schools to engage kids with science, engage them with their learning and get them outdoors. Let's find out more. Now Shani, you're a tech teacher. I am, uh, yep. You do all of the practical subjects at the school and you've been here for about two years, is that correct? Yes, yeah, my second year, yes. And you saw the aquaponics system first installed with Ian, you did some professional development with him and you've really taken this as a passionate way of bringing science into the classroom for your students, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there was a bit of a bare ag pot and I wanted to do a little bit of work in there and then yep. Uh, Daniel had brought, you know, brought the aquaponic system into, into play and I wanted the kids to understand a bit more about agriculture and, and aquaponics and, and how it all works and I think the best way that to really do it is to actually start from the ground up. So by getting the kids to make the system themselves, um, you know, they get to understand it in, in depth. And, and what have you found with the engagement with the kids at the school? Oh, they love it. It's it's all hands on. Um, there's a bit of theory in there, but they're they're working on something along the way. So it's a project at the end, and something they can be proud of and and really enjoy. Now this school is thriving. When you walk around this school, you just feel at peace and at ease. Mm -hmm. The school's actually having a lot of positive impact on the local community. I see a lot of artwork up from the students. Yep. Yeah. Um, you've actually got um, students work in, I believe, international exhibition exhibitions as well. Yeah. Yeah. Rick. Um, uh, Rick Ball was the one that started that sort of motion and, and getting all the artwork out in town and so you know the kids can be proud of their work they can see it uh, all through town and and other people can see see what they've you know what they've created. And the plan is to take a lot of this fresh produce that's currently growing here and take that out into the town and into the community as well is that correct? Yeah 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 we've already started that on a, on, a, on a lower scale just within the school itself but the more we build on it the more we can spread it out to the community and yeah. And regional centres, I mean, particularly in sort of the west of New South Wales, food access can be an issue sometimes, fresh food, yep. the prices of food. Yeah. So absolutely. having a school that's actually providing cheap, good, nutritious food to the community mm. is a real asset, isn't it? Yeah, and nutrition is, is the key word there. So you, you bring, you've got to travel at least an hour to get a lot of fresh food, you know, and it's from supermarkets, like... It, when you're getting fresh food from from the ground or, or from the aquaponics it's completely fresh so you know yep. it's not sitting there for weeks or anything either so you're really getting the nutrients out of the food well you're well down the track you're two years into it you've already integrated this into your curriculum you've got a setup that's humming and Ian's coming back periodically to check on it. I'm heading up the road now to Will Kenya to have a look at a system that's just been set up and is on the way towards what you guys have got. Mm. So I'm gonna have a look at how it's impacting their community and then I'm gonna come back. Right, yeah. so I look forward to seeing you soon, mate. You Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Sana, Headley, how are you going? Uh, I'm going good. Mate. Trying to catch a fish, mate? Yeah. Headley. I don't believe there's any fish in here, mate. I haven't seen you catch any for a couple of minutes. What's the trick? I don't know. <laughs> They're good at hiding, aren't they? I don't think there's fish in here too, yeah. You don't reckon? Probably one fish left. You like reckon? West. Yeah, okay. All right. But you're going to catch them and you're going to weigh them and see what percentage growth you've got, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, right. Do you like working in this area? Not. This bit here. Not this bit. What's your favourite bit of the gardens? Maybe the work patch. The work patch? Yeah. Yeah, righto. What are you growing at the moment? Some lettuce, spinach, tomatoes. 
Yeah. yeah. Little herbs. And you get to eat it much? Not yet now. I'm not really done. There's a tomato, mango, and, oh, not mango, mandarin. Oh, okay. There. Lemon, tree. And they're growing all right up here? Yeah. I suppose you just got to keep the water up to them, don't you? Keep an eye on them. Yeah, righto. So Matt and Phil, you guys have got a really engaging program here. Just run us through some of the things that you're doing with the kids to try and engage them. Um, we're trying to do a lot of hands-on uh, activities to get the students engaged. So yep. we've got things like our aquaponics setup, um, where we've got fish um, and growing some plants from that. Um, we're running compost, we've got our garden beds. Um, we've got a classroom in here where we're trying to uh, do some more hands-on learning for our kids that have been a bit disengaged from school. Yep. Um, we're building a pizza oven, we're doing some mosaics, artworks, so we've got a lot of... You've got a lot on. We've got, got a lot going lots, on. You need lots of different things because different kids like different stuff, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. It's about yeah. um, trying to find that project that a child's engaged with. Now, Phil, it's working, you reckon? Yeah. There's more kids coming to school now? Yeah, yeah. are getting some kids that don't know how to come to school and... Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a victory, isn't it, yeah. mate? Yeah. Try and reconnect with them. Now, water's pretty critical. This part of the country, I imagine, guys. Yeah, not a lot of rain out here. No. Um, yeah, we've got had a bit of rain lately. Yeah. Dam's nice and full. And the kids go fishing in here from time to time. Yep. Yeah, uh, so we've got some trout in here. Um, so we're growing them up and yabbies as well. So fantastic. They love fishing for yabbies, and then we'll do a cook up with them. Yep. Um, yeah. So. And so eating what they grow here is a big part of this, isn't it, Phil? Bit of a paddock to plate. Um, type team we're, yeah. we're trying to run, so yeah, if we can give them the skills and the knowledge to get food from their landscape and eat well and, and eat, eat healthy. Well. Our nearest supermarket, Coles or Woolies, is two hours down the road. So if we can grow or produce food here, you're gonna save yourself and eat healthy. G'day, Ian. How you going, mate? Oh, I'm going all right, thanks. And yourself? Not too bad. Now you've come by to check on how the setup's going. Yeah. Part of the program that you support the teachers here and keeping basically the fish alive. Yeah, oh, well, the, they do that. I just come and, um, yeah, give them a hand and do some professional development along with the STEM learning outcomes. In rural areas, I, it's, well, it's my belief systems, we, we should think different because um, if we don't change the way we're thinking, and we keep on doing the same thing and getting the same result, that's insanity. So Ian, the school teachers do the basic day-to-day -day maintenance and the kids do the basic day-to-day -day maintenance of this system. Um, at the moment, you're just running one tank. That's you've correct. You've built this to scale up to include four tanks. That's correct. And then you come by about every six months and you check on the progress and you fix any components that have been causing problems and the whole system has backups as well. Can you take us through a little bit about the basics about how this system works? Okay, yeah, no problems, Tim. Okay, so the first thing is you, you monitor your water quality. So on the board here, we've got different charts. So you've got your pH, you've got your ammonia, here is your ranges of what your pH is uh, and all your different um, nutrients for your plants. And down here is probably the most important one, which is the ammonia and pH coll correlation. And that gives you all the data just in graph form. So before you feed out, you've got to know what your water quality is. Now this tank can take 30 trout, grow them up to 333 grams, so that's 10 kilos of fish. Those 10 kilos of fish will grow approximately four square meters of, um, of plants, and we'll go out there a little bit later. So the fish poo and goes down into the pipe. It comes out here. So this is what we call a swell separator. And we've just added a little bit of orchard netting in there so it catches all the fish poo. And this might get washed out once a week. It might get washed out. Oh, every day if there's a lot of feed going into the system. Everything's so the, water, the water from the fish directly gets filtered before it goes to the plants. That's the important Be, thing. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So it gets filtered. This is where the solids go, not the fine stuff, but it's, this is all balancing on cost effectiveness. Um, and then it goes into your biological filter and then the biological filter goes outside 
and that's where the plants will suck up all the nutrients. So as I say in the classics mate, here's something that you prepared earlier. These are some grow beds that you set up last time you are out here. Now you reckon that one tank in that container will support four of these? That's exactly right. Four square metres, so there's two square metres in each. Yep. And look at that root growth. That is phenomenal, isn't it? Just yeah. from those few fish in that tank. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that's all fresh. So yep. what, when I look at these, I look to make sure they're nice and clean. Yes. Because if they're nice and clean, they're getting that nutrient transfer into the yeah, righto. Into the crop. Okay. Phil, a teacher's work is never done, mate. The kids do a lot of this work, but obviously you guys have got to put in some extra effort as well to make the program run, don't you? Yep. I'll keep these crows away too. They make a mess in our garden. Crows are giving you curry? Yeah. They're smart birds, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, it's frustrating for Phil and I because yeah, I can imagine we come in and uh, we see this all pulled apart. And you do a bit of work and then you come back the next day and half of it's yeah, gone. Yeah. So we <laughs> we've got some resources to solve it, but then we step back and thought, well, how's that going to teach the kids? Yeah. So um, we've put it back on them. Now the thing with teaching kids. Um, you're not only bringing them to school, but you're trying to engage them in opportunities in the broader community. And there are opportunities in Mulcanya, aren't there? You were telling me off camera, Matt, there's opportunities with local government, with golf courses and leisure, with the stations, with the agriculture yeah. program, which this blends in beautifully with. Yeah. So there are opportunities here if we can just get these kids engaged with school. Absolutely. There's heaps of opportunities around town um, for employment. And um I'm hoping this could be a bit of a gateway. Um, we're surrounded by stations and um, we have plenty of opportunities out there. Yeah. Um, just trying to build up some work skills and a little bit of knowledge about country, growing things. Makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it, yeah. Phil? To have kids outside working in country, they're going to get a job in rather than sitting in a hot office. box in the middle of the day. Yeah, yeah. sit in an office all day. Yeah, yeah. Not for everyone, is it? Shani, I'm back. Hey, hey Tim, welcome back. Thank you. Now we're freshening up these um, benches today, installing a new aquaponic system that's been completely designed by the kids. Yep. Will Kenya, they're on the journey, they're getting started, they're going to do some fantastic things and it's great to see how a program that starts small like that ends up big like this in no time at all. Hmm. Let's go and see what the kids have been up to. Great, let's go. Shani, we've got the whole crew here. Who's this? This is Dante. He's one of our Year 7 students. Been working on the... Uh, Dante, how are you going, mate? I'm going good, bro. Yeah, he's been working on the chop and flip barrel. All right. Yep. Well, we better get him to tell us how this works, I reckon. Absolutely. What do you reckon? Yeah, great idea. G'day, bros. I'm Dante. I'm from an indie, and this is the chop and flip barrel. It flows up from here, and then it goes into the bell siphon, and the bell siphon drops the water into there, and you put the nutrient in here. That was an awesome explanation, mate. And people can do this easily themselves, can't they? Yeah. I mean, it took us like two days to get it. Yeah, two days to get this whole thing going. Probably, yeah. And now you're going to grow food and fish. Yeah. Well done, bros. Yeah, bros. Now, Dante, this mob over here, they've designed another one, but they don't want to talk on camera. You better show us through this one as well. Okay. The year eight built this NFT. The nutrients are in here. So are the fish. That is the filter. And they pump water, well the water goes through this and to get the waters like watered, I don't know. The nutrients. Yeah, the nutrients watered into the plants. And then they just, and then the water goes into this pump. Of, can you get the camera over here to show the pump? Okay, sir. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Where's the pump? Where's that, the pump? Oh, yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. Right up. And then there. it pumps into that. And then, it go, then the water goes back into there to pump the water back into the pump. So it just keeps going round and round and round. Yeah. And it filters before the plants. Yeah, right in that. So a lot of people make that mistake when they set up their aquaponic systems. You guys haven't, and you're in year eight. Well done. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for introducing us not only to the amazing work that you guys have done in a matter of a couple of days, but to the amazing crew from year seven and eight who've set these systems up that a lot of people struggle with. I reckon there's someone else we need to be talking about. Who's that? Uh, Miss Shani. Miss Shani. Come on in, Miss Shani. Round of applause, guys. You've got a fantastic oh, yeah. tech yeah. teacher here. Yeah. What an amazing school, what an amazing teacher, that was what amazing students. That was terrible, but I'm in my 50s, so That's I don't have any street cred, <laughs> mate. It's gone. 
Dante, if you guys are wondering who you're going to be voting for in federal politics or who you're going to be voting for in the Logies in about 10 years time, I reckon we've got Dante here from Menindi. Shani, so good. We've had a system going now for a couple of years in the school. Look at the engagement that it's creating. Look at these young people problem solving and building their own systems based on a fantastic system set up by yourselves and Ian and managed so well by the people at the school here. It's an absolute credit to education. Thank you very much for having us out here today. And if you guys want to find out more about what's going on here, check out the Menindi Public School website. And it's been an absolute honour to Thanks, spend Tim. time with you. Thank you.